Welcome to another episode of 10 Minute Teach. Today I'm going to be covering The Lost Ruins of Arnak, the popular deck building worker placement game released in 2020. To win a game of Lost Ruins of Arnak, you must obtain victory points. Victory points in this game can be derived from a variety of different sources. Whenever I teach this game to new players, I always start off by suggesting that the research track is a good way to obtain victory points. So if you take the research action, you may move either your magnifying glass or you can move your notebook. Please note that the magnifying glass must always be at least equal to or higher up the track than the notebook. The notebook can never be higher. Makes sense. You're discovering things and then writing them in your notebook or journal. So once you reach the top of the research track, you have found the Lost Temple. While you're in the Lost Temple, you may perform research actions in the future in order to obtain the tiles at the top of the temple. When navigating the research track, players must pay resources in order to move up. Oftentimes, players will find that there are forks in the road where they have their choice of reach which resource to pay. So for example, if the player wanted to continue up the middle of this track, then they would have to pay a tablet and a ruby to do so. Note that the first player to hit one of these spots where these bonus tiles lie will be the only one that gets access to that bonus tile. I had mentioned that Lost Ruins of Arnak is also a worker placement game. Another way to obtain victory points is by digging and discovering new sites. So if I'm the blue player and I want to discover this site with the car on it, simply must do the following. Pay the three compasses and discard a card with the matching symbol in the top left hand corner. So in this case, this card has a car and the space has a car. Once you've satisfied the prerequisites for digging at a new site, then you may take one of your two pawns, place it on the site, take the three value idol, place a one value, in this case, new site, which would give me a coin and two tablets, and finally, put a guardian on that site. Players who are unable to overcome a guardian before the end of their turn, or aka when they pass, will incur one fear card at the end of the round. Players can overcome the guardian by playing the depicted cost. So in this case, it requires that we discard a card from our hand, pay one compass, and pay an arrowhead. Once you've overcome the guardian, you'll now have access to its boon here in the top right hand corner. At any time during your turn, once during the game, since you can see that it is a one-time free action, you can utilize its special boon, then flip it over, and you can see Guardians are worth five victory points at the end of the game. And this is whether or not you use their boon. You may recall that we pulled the idol from the dig site. Idols, again, at the end of the game are worth three victory points. They can be used to call in for additional items as a free action. In this game, Anytime you see a lightning bolt above an icon, that means it's a free action and won't cost you your main action, which will force you to end your turn. So you could place it in one of these slots here, for instance, if we placed it in the one, and then you could pick from one of these rewards. But you'll notice as you cover these spaces up, you will cover up the victory points at the end of the game. There is a maximum of 10 victory points that you can earn should you choose not to cover any of those spaces up. Now to talk about another way to gain victory points. In Lost Ruins of Arnak, players will start with a standard deck of six, which includes two coin cards, two compass cards, and two fear cards. You can improve your deck by buying a card. To improve a player's deck, Cards can be purchased from the card row. Cards to the right of the scepter are items, and cards to the left are artifacts. Early in the game, items are more prevalent, but as the game continues, this is going to abstract players moving deeper into the temple and jungle, and more artifacts will be available. Now is a good time to really go over the anatomy of a card. So cards in general can be played for two different purposes. They can, they can either be discarded, to move pawns around the board, or they can be played for their effect. Sometimes a card will have an exile. When you exile a card, you remove it from your deck permanently. In the bottom left hand corner, you can see this is the price to buy the card from the card row. In this case, it's going to be two coins. 
In the bottom right, this is how many victory points the card is worth at the end of the game. So let's talk about some of the key differences between items and artifacts. So on items, you'll notice that they cost coins to purchase while artifacts cost compasses. Items when purchased go to the bottom of your deck and are generally used for the next turn, whereas artifacts are played immediately or utilized immediately for its effect and then put into your discard pile. When they are used in the future, you must pay this little tablet cost in order to activate. One nice thing about artifacts, you'll notice in the top right hand corner there's an airplane which is hiring a pilot. Pilots are able to travel anywhere on the board where anything else would generally be restricted. Let's talk about that. Each player aid is going to have this travel hierarchy. In general, the boot is the most basic form of travel and will be the most restrictive. Cars and boats can be substituted for the boot, but they can't be substituted for each other. And at the top, you'll see that the airplane can substitute for any of those means, but they are rare and harder to obtain. So be very judicious with the use of those. You may also pay two coins to hire a pilot, but this is very costly and should only be a last resort. Playing a card is another action in this game. So to play a card, you simply take the card on your turn and activate it for its effect, whether you're using the bottom portion or you're using it for the top left portion for travel purposes. Cards can have a lot of different effects. Sometimes they're a free action. Again, anything with a lightning bolt is a free action and does not notate the end of your turn once playing it. Some of them have a one use and then they go into your discard pile. And as I had mentioned earlier, some of them are exiled and removed from your hand or your card lot altogether. Let's discuss the assistants. The assistants are kind of a bonus turn that you can do. And you'll encounter your first assistant, and this is for the bird track, as I call it, by moving your notebook to the first space here and activating it for this silver effect. You'll be able to go through any one of these piles, but let me pull one up here for you. So the, note, or the uh, assistant can usually, once per turn, give you some kind of a bonus resource. When you utilize one, you'll tilt it to the side, collect the resource, and it cannot be used until it is either refreshed, upgraded, or the end of the round. Players may have up to two assistants. Assistants always come in on the silver side, but can be upgraded to the gold side. Typically, this will pay out a higher amount of resources. When you upgrade to the gold side, the assistant will be refreshed when doing so. And that just about covers all of the basic actions in Lost Ruins of Arnak, and also how you can obtain victory points. Let's go ahead and give a quick recap. You can dig at a site, and this is done by selecting an available site, whether it's the, the basic ones, the tier one, or the tier two, if they're available. All you must do is you must pay the travel requirement, which is gonna be on one of your cards, discard it, then move your little pawn there and take the resources. You can discover a new site by paying the cost of either three compasses for a level one, six for a level two, move there, discard the travel card, take the idol, get its bonus, and then place the guardian on top of the level one site, collect the bonus, then place the guardian on top. Okay, then we overcome a guardian by paying the cost on the guardian, discard the guardian off that site, take it for yourself. Guardians all have the boons and victory points on the back. You can buy an item, which is at the very top. You can buy an artifact, which is at the very top. You can play the card. You can research, which is on the track on the right-hand side. And finally, you can pass. And don't forget, anything with a lightning bolt is a free action that does not require you to give up your turn. And that is Lost Ruins of Arnak. Thanks for watching.